four games for preschoolers. That's right. We have four top games for preschoolers that we're presenting here today. And all of them are readily available. And I'll put links down below for Amazon.com. And they all are going to have a certain nerdy quality to them. So let's get started. And number four, we have Catapult Field. <laughs> so this here is Catapult Feud. It's more of a toy than a game, I suppose. This is a modern retake of an old 1980s game called Catapult and Crossbows. And there was a 19... Uh, 90s version called Weapons and Warriors. So let me flip it back and you can see what I'm talking about here where it is uh, more of a kinetic dynamic game and you do have these plastic blocks they're larger than Lego bits and you design it to make your own castle. The opposing player will do the same. You have your soldiers that you're trying to protect and you have these awesome catapults uh, equipped with rubber bands and you fling these rubber balls at each other. And of course, trying to destroy their castle and uh, knock out the opposing players. Uh, of course, because of these small balls, there is a warning that you shouldn't have anyone younger than four use this. Um, so obviously you want to use your best uh, guidance and supervise the kids. But man, do the kids have fun with this? Of course, you could play with the cards, but otherwise they'll just have fun uh, destroying each other's castles. Uh, so let's take a look here. Get the box open. And if you're new to the channel, uh, if you like what you see, hopefully you could think about liking and subscribing and don't miss out on additional content. So of course, it's gonna have a rule sheet here, very simple, just one page. The box insert's pretty cool. Got your toy soldiers here. You got the rubber balls and associated cards that you can use and extra rubber bands. And within these pocket are gonna be the bit, uh, plastic pieces. So here is the catapult itself. You're gonna attach the rubber bands here and I'll give it some spring to it and you fling the balls with that. So this is a really nice mold. And then and these side pockets are going to be the bits for the castle. So there we go. So there's a whole bunch of them and you have a gate. Okay. All right. So really cool to uh, knock these uh, pieces over. It's pretty durable. I've played it a bunch of times and the pieces and miniatures still hold up well. And so uh, I'm sure it's going to last quite a long time and give your kids a lot of fun and excitement. So that is our number four choice. At number three, we have Sticky Cthulhu. So this here is Sticky Cthulhu. It's another dynamic action game, and kids love to gravitate towards these sort of things. And basically, you have these rubber tentacles, and you're trying to grab certain tokens. Let's check it out. And this is a great way to get your kids into the... Cthulhu Mythos. Now, if that's a little bit too uh, creepy for you, um, the original theme of this game was called uh, Sticky Chameleon. So you had a chameleon tongue grabbing some bugs. But here, he, you got uh, um, tentacles instead, of course, for Cthulhu, and you're trying to grab certain other lesser monsters. Now, mixed up uh, are some tokens of investigators, and you don't want to get those and that would uh, negate your uh, turn. Uh, you do have some dice in here, and uh, basically it's, uh, you're gonna match the color with the token that you're trying to get, as well as the shape on it. So pretty easy for kids to understand. Let's get this box open. And yeah, got bags of tokens, really durable. And once again, they're gonna be uh, various colors. And then you got these investigators you're trying to avoid. And here are the said custom dice with the different colors and different shapes. And then you have, of course, the tentacles. Uh, here is the original bag. Here are the ones that we've been using. And if you do happen to get this game and they, you do find it to get less sticky over time, which it can because of dirt or whatnot, uh, you can uh, wash it with water and it'll go back to its original stickiness. So pretty cool. Just, uh, let me see if I could demonstrate it very quickly here. Just sort of flap it on the ground, uh, on the table, and you could grab the token with it. So pretty cool, very dynamic. You do have the option to play some cards here that add some depth, uh, where they give you, uh, like you have to use two technicals at a time or whatnot. 
Let's just take a quick peek here. So. All right, so of course there's gonna have Cthulhu there. So here's some of the cards here. So for this one, you cannot talk while playing your turn. This one, you have to use your non-dominant hand to play. This one, you have to sing a song while um, doing your round. Here, you have to spin around a circle before you attempt to grab uh, a token. Here, you have to balance on one foot to grab a token. So yeah, pretty fun for the kids to do all this. And of course, fun for adults as well. So that's a, that's a pretty cool game to play. Kids would love it. And once again, quite a nerdy theme, Sticky Cthulhu. And number two, we have my first Carcassonne. So this is my first Carcassonne. And Carcassonne is an older game that helps jumpstart this modern board game craze. And this is, of course, the kids' version of it. You can tell with the colorful graphics here, it's really appealing. And you can see there's kids of different um, colored clothes. And to play this game, you're gonna place multiple tiles, just like in the original game. And once you complete a row, and there's an end to both sides, you're gonna collect the, the friend that is there of the certain color. And if you are a blue, you're trying to get all the blue friends. If you're red, you're trying to get all the red friends. Uh, so let's take a look at the box here. And it comes with these chunky play tiles. They're really thick and durable. They hold up, hold up quite well. The artwork's really appealing. And you can see there's a lot of detail in there with the, the duck there. You got this river or the pond. You got uh, flowers on the grass. You can see here there's a tower. So really well done. Got a little sheep there. And so basically with these tiles, once again, you're trying to accumulate the friends and it comes with these large wooden needles, they're not plastic, they're actually wooden and really nice to hold. In a way, this is sort of uh, more fun than the original game. Um, and uh, the piece was a lot bigger and I find it more appealing to be honest with you as the art style in the original game is uh, uh, not as cleaned up as this version is. So this is my first Corker Zone. Really fun to play and have the kids find more friends. Number one, we have Castle Panic. So this here is my first Castle Panic. Castle Panic is a tower defense game and we feature the second edition uh, recently, which comes with all these cool miniatures. And this is a more simplified version. And it's really easy to get into. And you can see here on the top, it's won a lot of accolades. Uh, it has really cool art style here and almost a D&D type theme. Let's flip it to the back here. And you can see here, there's a play board and you have all these shapes that you're trying to associate it uh, with it. Uh, there's no reading involved. So it's really easy to get young ones into this uh, game. And of course you have a tower that you're trying to protect. The monsters will start here, and as each player goes, you advance the monster tokens, and if they hit the first wall, that gets knocked down. If they hit the uh, castle, then you lose. I very rarely lost a game uh, with kids. Even if you're not trying to play your best, it's really uh, easy to win this game. So it's not disheartening to kids, but uh, more importantly, it's really a great deal of fun to play this game. And it is cooperative. All the other games that we showed off are, are competitive, and this is a cooperative game. Let's take a look at the components here. And you have your player board here with cool watercolor type art. And you've got your said castle that you're trying to protect. And multiple cards here. Sorry, they're all jumbled up. And these cards are gonna show you the heroes that you have with their associated shapes. My little boy loves this game. Oh, here is a card, special card that you can repair the, the wall if it gets uh, destroyed. And of course, there are little player aid cards here. 
Here is the tokens for the monsters that you draw. On the back side will be the same and it features some cool artwork there. On the flip side are gonna be the goblins. And this means this is a marcher and he forces the other goblins to move an extra space. Uh, so they're gonna be extra uh, critters with special abilities as well to add some uh, flair to the game. And when you capture the goblins, uh, you don't kill them, you put them in this dungeon, all right? So you're not knocking them out necessarily, you're placing them in the dungeon. And so this is a really cool box insert. So this game is a great deal of fun. It's very simple to understand. And once again, you play cooperatively and it's once again, our number one choice for top kid games for preschoolers. So that's it. Thank you for watching everyone. Have a great day. Top four for preschoolers. Do we have a stereo? On number three, we have st sticky kung fu. At number four, we have cattle fear. Woohoo!